welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 176. This episode is with author and world-renowned acting coach Bernard Hiller. I first became aware of him after reading his book Stop Acting, Start Living, and it was a blast getting to know the man behind it all. In this episode, we talk about why traveling is so good for you, his training at Summerstock, moving from New York to L.A., developing his teaching technique, how he started working with Emilio Rivera, the importance of asking for help, and so much more. Be sure to check out his classes at bernardhiller.com, his first book, Stop Acting, Start Living, on Audible, and be on the lookout for his new book, The Revolutionary Guide to Acting, coming out in July of this year. But before you do all that, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 176, with Bernard Hiller. Theme song time. LA now you're back I, I'm in LA but the idea is that I, I coach uh, people sort of different play you know different countries right because there is acting in every country true I mean, every country has acting they all have they all have stories to be told and uh you know there's not a country in the world that doesn't have actors true true and so uh, I'm lucky to be working I think I've been to 26 countries so far Ooh. And but I, I'm going to one um, end of the month because I'm coaching on a film. Right. This is my 52nd time going to Rome. So I've been to Rome a lot. Wow. Okay. Is that is that your favorite? I yeah, know it, it has to be, right? Rome. If you've never been to Rome, it's have you been to Rome? I, not yet. I know you have to go. It's, yeah. Rome is the greatest. The people, everything. Life is all about la vita bella, which means a beautiful life. It's all about having a good time. It's about having fun. You, you don't get together. There's no fast food places. I mean, oh, interesting. Burger. It's all about if you're sitting down, it's for two hours with your friends. You have wine. It's about getting to know each other. It's not about eating. No one eats like, let's get this food. There's no there's no fast food. The oh. idea of fast food doesn't exist because it's all about sitting, enjoying. And they go for dinner at 930. Oh, wow. They eat dinner and they stay up and, you know, I don't oh. know. It's, it's about way. life. It's communal. It's about having fun. It's relaxation. It's yeah. Fun. I love well, that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the beautiful thing about Rome. But that's there's some other. You know, I love Paris and and London and other countries. So sure. I have, I'm very lucky to be going to some of the most beautiful places and meet some of those beautiful artists. Yeah, that's a very lucky. I bet. And those kinds of things, just any sort of human interaction spent with other people, it just adds, I find it adds to your spirit. It's just, well, have you uh, moved? Have you been out of your Florida? Oh, yeah. I've been to more than half the states, like 20 countries outside the U.S. as well. I'm, I'm okay, a big good. traveler. <laughs> because because if the, you have to think of yourself, the world, like a book. Yeah. And if you've only stayed in one place, you only read one page of a book. It's yeah. a sad thing. And a lot of people don't travel. And it's really, it's a detriment to them. It's I really agree. them. It's not like Rome misses you. You will miss yeah. Rome. <laughs> They're like, oh, like, where are they? You know, they, they don't care. Or yeah. Paris or anything. There's nothing that misses you. You need to go there. It's so beautiful. It's so nice. It's so different. I'm I'm about that. My dad was one of those people that like he just bought a sailboat at like 20 and just sailed the world because he could. And he instilled that sort of wanderlust, you know, where if there's something I see in a picture, you I gotta see it. But, it is, but that's what the world is. You're only here for a minute and the world's here and you're visiting because we're visitors. We're all visitors on this planet. We don't really live here. Now, if I you're agree. going to visit Paris, um, if you're on vacation, mm -hmm. everybody's planning the vacation. First, we're going to go here, then we're going to go there. And in some ways, Earth is like a vacation. We're here for only a short amount of time because we don't live here. Right. Eventually, we're going back to wherever we came from. I'm not sure where, but... Uh, you know, you know, we have three days in Paris. Everything's packed. No one's sitting at home watching TV. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's it's that kind of. You have to think of yourself as a visitor to the planet and a world citizen, where it's like the human beings. Yeah, you're you know? a world citizen. Yeah, because we are in the world citizen, and now more mm -hmm. than ever. I mean, 
I, I'm coaching someone from China and I mean, it's all the same because we're all exactly the same thing. We all have the same problems. We're not different. There's really no difference about us or your enemies. They all want exactly the same thing. It's just their point of views are different, but what they fundamentally want is exactly the same. I agree. That kind of trips me out when I read like really old plays, like Ibsen's Enemy of the People. And I'm like, how many hundreds of years ago was this? It's <laughs> wow, we're still the same. Huh. We're the same. It's all based on a lot of fear, and there's a lot of fear going on, and some or a lot of negative things going on right now, especially in this country. It's 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 really bad. You're right. And it's based on fear. Yeah. Fear of the next person and, mm-hmm. and hatred, and because it's easy to hate, it's hard to love. Facts. It's to bring for. I mean, yeah, it takes courage to love someone or get to know someone. So people live in fear, like the darkness, you know. And artists and great people are supposed to bring light where other people bring darkness. Agreed. It's its own kind of superpower that we all have, but it, it takes strength to choose it. Well, you have to, yeah, you have to realize that, yeah, not only does it take strength, it really takes courage. But that's what makes it so powerful as well, you know? Well, yeah, I think that's true. I think it's true. I love it. Did you travel a lot growing up? Um, I was born in Argentina and lived in Germany. Oh. So I came to the United States when I was 11. So oh, I didn't cool. anything but... Uh, um, I didn't speak English when I arrived here. So I wow. moved to Europe when I grew up. And, and then when I went back there teaching uh, in all these countries, it just exploded. And now I'm working there and coaching there. And it's, it's so wonderful to meet wonderful people from different, you know, who yeah. think differently about different things and, and eat different foods and have different habits. It's so fascinating. The world is fascinating if you get out there. You know? Agreed. I made a whole show about it, about interesting people. <laughs> That's great. You know what? There's a there's a famous direct producer who did that. He wrote letters to people he wanted to meet. Oh, and cool. they all came on. Like he wrote letters to like astronauts or anyone. Yeah. And he would lunch with them and say, I know you can teach me something. He would, have, he would invite them to lunch so you could learn something from them. That's what this whole vehicle is. And realizing that there is that commonality of humans. Like we can come from opposite sides of existences but there is that thing what we can all connect on and it's being a person well it's, it's really because we have special human needs that are not that are just bread i mean i don't know anyone in zimbabwe or whatever uh, you know i don't even made, made up a country but i know they drink water i mean right. i don't know somebody, <laughs> it's like certain needs and i have that in my acting book yeah which i talk about the 10 human needs which is that we just all have the same needs it's not something you learn it's just something you, you know, you have to sleep. You have to, there's certain things. It's not like, oh, this is a choice. No, mm-hmm. eating peanut butter is a choice, but you yeah. don't have, to, that's, <laughs> that's not something, you, it's not a human need, but being loved, uh, having a family, mm-hmm. belonging to someone. There's certain basic things, which is that unless you take care of your human needs, you can't pursue anything else. I agree. Though, if I could add one need to be the 11th it would probably be peanut butter because it is well pretty good <laughs> yeah you know what it's, it's, so, it's so funny my kids love peanut butter they love peanut butter don't like it at you all. don't like peanut butter but my kids say i don't stand because i like peanuts yeah <laughs> i love the peanuts i still like the peanut butter i don't know really why. what's your go-to sandwich then because peanut butter and jelly is such a staple <laughs> i know you know we, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I have something called dulce de leche. It's a different thing. Ooh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that tastes a billion times better. You're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. If we're comparing, you know, but that's like in every yeah, man for like legend. It comes in a can and it's brown. You taste some of it. You're not yep. going to <laughs> You have taste, Bernard, I see. Okay. Well, I respect yeah. that. Yeah, I respect- <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people love that peanut butter. I mean, that's as American as you can get, you know, peanut butter and jelly. It's true. And I, so I did read your book twice, loved it. I listened to the audio book as well. Oh, good. And I like audio books a lot, especially when the author reads them because you get the intent and you get like, oh, this is out of their mouth. What is on the page? You know, because there's no barriers anymore. I I always really like that. And I know from your book that you Mm -hmm. came to the States to New York 
Right. And, and that was where the kind of interest started. Well, no, my, my interest in, in wanting to be an actor was when I was four. I always wanted to be an actor. There was just a, mm -hmm. it just a, is that that I landed in a city that had those possibilities. In other words, I the idea is that, but you have to realize that I was just lucky to be in New York, which is the center of theater, uh, Broadway, great training. If you want to be a singer, dancer, there is no better training in America than New York City because True. that's where it is located. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's therefore I was able to try to fulfill my my passion by getting training, singing, dancing, every type of training I could think of. Sure. Uh, and so I was lucky. And that's what happens to some. Now some people don't actually have to move because they have this, uh, this wonderful device where they can Zoom with someone, take Zoom lessons. Um, but in the old days, you know, you have to travel to New York to get certain training or f for film, LA is very good. There's certain mm -hmm. cities that you go to because sure. if you want to go, uh, you know, learn about cars or make cars, you would go to Detroit, right? Right. I mean, and that's where you have to go. Sometimes people write like, oh, I live in Minnesota. I said, okay, well, you have to move. I mean, right. <laughs> <not coming laughs> to you. I mean, if you want to go to the fashion capital in the world, I don't know, Paris. I mean, it's not like, you know, Oklahoma Right. Places is the capital and people just travel there. No question about it. I mean, that's where it is. Yeah. And the world's so small now that there's access to oh, it. Yeah. Did, when you when you started, did you have like an avenue that you were thinking? Was it singer, dancer, actor or like any and all? Of no, it? I, I no, I started as a, as an actor. Yeah. And then I love musicals always. So I learned sure. to sing and dance. And in New York, if you don't sing and dance, you're not going to be working this much. Good because point. It's a musical town. It's a mm -hmm. musical town. And musicals is how it kept me going. I was doing a lot of West Side Story. Cool. And a lot of color on the roofs. Nice. So shows kept me busy in other musicals too. But I loved singing. And there's nothing better than musicals. There just isn't. That takes all of you everything that's what yeah. i love you can sing you gotta dance you can using every part i mean i just love it that was i think i recommend everyone to even do that if they were serious about acting sure and that's what those great schools they all have singing and dancing courses everybody has to take it just i mean even also just from the physical side you know and just know your body and movement and it's so you have to know your body you have to know your voice you, have to, you know to be a powerful actor is to do many many things that will help you become powerful yeah you know, it's like in school, you don't just learn English. You're learning other classes to round you as a human being. Imagine they just taught English and math. That's all you need, really. Right. But they don't, that's, imagine that's all they taught in school. You wouldn't, that, that, that wouldn't help you. You know, I mean, because that's really what you use all day is English. Or sure. reading, reading English, speaking it, and math is, I mean, that's the, you're not being asked a lot of chemistry questions. Sure. But, uh, you get, uh, but it would rounds you when you have a really great education. You learn about this languages and history and all kinds of great courses they have in school because that's how you develop something. You don't just go right at it. And then you build the tools that you can then use later on. Absolutely. It's pretty neat. And did you, did I read correctly that shortly after you went to high school, you toured? Yes. No. Uh, well, after I went to high school, I auditioned for something called summer stock. That was oh, my interesting. Dream. Summer stock is something you do in the summer. Oh, and makes sense. <laughs> Checks out. It's, it's musicals. And we would do them. I was hired as a dancer, singer dancer. And we would do a week like in New Hampshire at some beautiful resort. Cool. And then you'd go to some other city or then you go to like Cape Cod and you take the show to these different places. And usually there was a star attached to it, like cool. TV star or somebody was there. And so I started working. I think the first thing, first show I did, I think it was called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Very <laughs> wonderful musical. And uh, yeah, I love that one. That was That's great. Cool. And so I remember starting, yeah. And then I just kept working in the summer, doing summer stock. And then I got to do some shows that wasn't during the summer, but that's a very, that's very common. A lot of people work on that. Mm -hmm. They work on summer uh, and there's a lot of great opportunities because in the summer, a lot of the theater will go to New Hampshire and then they have the summer stock and they do like, I think every week there's like a different show. I mean, I don't know if they still do it. Oh, wow. But they do that. Yeah. It was like New Hampshire. One week you saw South Pacific with this one, then that show, the music man, you had eight shows and sometimes you were higher for the season. And it was great. It was a great opportunity for me. Wow. Great place to cut your teeth and 
build on memory. Yeah, just, you know, not only memory, but the best way to learn to perform is to, to perform and to right. stop. So you can use, you can see what you're missing and what you're, what you don't have. Sure. I like to talk to people who've like achieved their dreams to see, like you can have a dream job, but a dream job is still a job. Like, did you find that it was different than you expected when you started doing it professionally? Uh, I don't know. I just, you know what happens? I don't really have a job. Yeah. There's a job and then there's a life. I just thought I created a life for myself. Cool. I don't really have a, I don't have a job. Uh, I don't think I've worked ever. I don't Great. think it's so like, no, because the thing I do is that I always seem to do what I really love doing. And if I didn't love doing it, I didn't do it. And, and I loved uh, singing, dancing, acting, uh, teaching, interviewing. Uh, I just wrote a screenplay, wrote books, Congrats. things that I love. Uh, and it's really about don't get a job because a job they have to pay you for. Uh, I ah, created a life. Good point. I created a life for myself. Uh, and you just love it. And they, they pay you as well. But I know all the, a lot of famous actors, they would do it for nothing because they just love it. It's like, yeah. how much do you have to pay to eat ice cream? Very few people have to like, here's some money, go buy some. Yeah. They, they love it. <laughs> you have to find something that you love, but you don't, what people don't understand, it's what you really love. Mm -hmm. If you study, if you work hard, you will do this job. Right. You will do this job. The job wants you. You just have to learn to work because if you want to achieve what you've never achieved, you have to become the person that you've never been. Here's where you are. Here's where your opportunities are. And now you have to raise up. Right. What I'm doing all the time. My I have, right now I'm doing something where I'm, uh, my goal is here and I'm here. So now I have to raise myself up, learn new things, get the opportunities. Uh, yeah. But don't get a job, create a life. I like that. Have you always been good at like following that passion, following that gut? Was that like an innate thing or did you have to kind of? Yeah, I think that, that I've always been, I was sort of listened to my gut. That was my, I, I, in my book that I just finished writing mm -hmm. and I'm starting to do the audio version tomorrow. Cool. Coming out in July. I think it's, it's taken me almost two years to write this. I'm excited. This, this is intense. Oh yeah. This yeah. is something. This is <laughs> good. And, uh, uh, what was the question? <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> Have you always innately been able to follow your gut or was it something you had to cultivate? Yeah, yeah, no, oh, no. The last thing I write on my book, mm -hmm. the last sentence I write, I want to thank all my instincts because it got me here. Cool. And that's really the last line of the book, which is the fact that everything I've ever done is based on instinct, including, you know, uh, including the exercises I've come up with or different mm -hmm. things that I feel I need to work on. And uh, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, it didn't work out as well for somebody, but I just thought it was going to work. Sometimes you tell people information that they need to hear, that they must hear, but a lot of times they don't want to. And, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that's a big problem because, well, it's a problem only with people who are not actors. Right. See, actors right. always want to hear what you've got to say good or bad they want to hear but people who are not actors if you tell them get out of your head follow your instincts you you have sadness or other things they don't want to deal with that and uh, that's fine it's going to hurt them you'll see oh no this is going to haunt them forever because yeah. the problem doesn't go away it just you have to be ready for it sure. and um yeah i've always tried to follow my instinct and uh when I do, it works out well. The show business will never develop the way you think it's going to develop. It doesn't, you, you're kind of going this path. Uh -huh. It takes you left. I thought it was going to go right. And so you just go there and it's taking me all this way to actually get to where I want to go. But it's not the direct line. Sure. So you, you got to like live in that uncertainty of like, okay, we're making a left turn. Okay. Because I never thought I should be teaching. I mean, I, I was singing, dancing, and acting, and I thought people who can't act teach. I right. That, <laughs> sure. I thought, why am I teaching? But somebody asked me, and and they started working, and it sort of it kind of had a life of its own, and I so I said, okay, we'll see where that takes me. But it's taken me actually to a better place than I could have gone had I just stayed on this path. People have to be oh. flexible. That's the key. You have to be much more flexible. Sure. Right now, I just, I, I just, I've been, I haven't acted in 10 years and now I did three shows in a row. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, 
I feel like it's some of the best work I've ever done because of all the work that I've done going this direction. Yeah. It's just unbelievable, really. You have to be willing to live the life that life is a mystery. My story. I like it. Because what were you before you were born? That's a mystery. Right. It goes afterwards, it's a mystery. And this is a mystery. But if people want to know a certainty, you're, you're obviously not, you're just delusional. Because sure. <laughs> it's a total mystery. And you never know what's around the corner. Anything can happen. All right. Well, that's it. But most people are just so frightened of what can happen. But sure. We're good. Have you, are you good at like, it's, it's going to be a weird question. Are you good at learning, like giving yourself uh, the permission to fail and like be not great at something right away? Listen, you have to learn. This. No, no. I think so, too. I mean, this is, listen, everything you've ever done, you suck. I mean, this is right. it's part of the beginning. I and mean, no one said like, whoa, that was great. If you sure. can think of anything you've ever done for the first time, you suck. Yeah. And the idea is that that's just the way it goes. That's the way the step one, step two. And yeah, I mean, in my book, I talk about four steps mm -hmm. uh, that you don't even know how bad you are. Then you know how bad you are. Then you yep. got to think about it. And then, I mean, I mean, yeah, some people are just, I mean, have you ever learned French brilliantly in the first day? No. <laughs> Everything is, but you suck. It's a normal thing. Everybody, I suck too. I mean, I wouldn't say the best teaching I did was the first day I was doing it. No. Sure. Like, no. So it's all about trying and, and, and failing. You don't really fail. Failing is part of learning. It's not uh, failing. Failing exists if you don't. If you stop trying, then you failed. Right. So failing, that's what failing means. I failed. I don't know. There were some people that have failed. And because it failed, it turned into something called rubber. In other words, because uh -huh. of something they have found right now, which I'm reading because of my family, they found that one of the COVID vaccines have actually helped somebody with brain cancer. So, wow. that, so the COVID vaccine didn't help them. But now we discovered how it helped this. Yeah. And, and that's how a lot of like, I don't know if you remember something called Polaroid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Way back when. Way back. Polaroid is like a mistake. Two people got together and they couldn't get it together, but they ended up with this. I go, this is interesting. Yeah. So uh, so everything is part of learning because it's really failure is, is, a, is a, something you label. Mm -hmm. But for someone else. It's a learning process. And that's what Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs said that you will right. never because you're not willing to fail enough. Yeah. It's that old saying, like, what is it? A master has failed more times than a beginner has even tried. And that's all. And what does it say about uh, the greatest uh, basketball player? Michael Jordan. Yeah. Michael Jordan said he's, he's missed more free throws than ever. Yeah. And so, so yeah, because you have three free, you have to miss to win. I mean, the idea is that, you cannot win unless you're ready to lose. Can you ever win without losing? And most people just want to win, so they'll always lose. If you just want to win, right. you'll always lose. You got to be, can, is there a game in the world? There's a Super Bowl coming up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, why are there people watching? Well, someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. But if everybody was going to win, nobody would watch because it's not, it's not a real game. Oh, okay. I like that. I mean, if everybody, we all knew this one's going to win because that's what life is. Maybe you win, you lose, but they'll come back next time. And it, there's not one game, the whole team. Who won last year? Super Bowl. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like the Academy Awards. Who won two years ago? Nobody remembers. Right. Remember <laughs> it's gone. Uh, so <clears throat> but if you're not, if you're a winner, you always win. It's not, it's not if you fail. It's like you're a winner. Oh, it didn't work out. I'll try it again. Try it again. Try it again. Like, you know, Thomas Edison tried a thousand times and he said, well, this is a thousand ways it doesn't work. Yeah. The way it can work. And that's the same thing with disease and cancer, with all those horrific diseases. People are looking and saying, in the disease is our answer. We're just not looking at it right. We just right. Look this way, look that way, you know. And that's what you need to become. You have to become a pioneer. You have to be willing to, I mean, it wasn't for you. I don't know what they discover, uh, you know, outside of, the moon or, or go to places people said the moon was impossible you could not go to the moon you couldn't leave the earth's orbit yeah oh so, and so somebody went somebody went and found the south pole i didn't go but i'm saying most people would just have stayed where you are yeah I mean, we live in america but america was sort of like half of it well less than half was discovered and then they, we said go west young man the idea of going west is like go to places you've ever gone before yeah. And that's really what the whole theory is. Otherwise, it could have just stayed there and never discovered what's over there. What's on the other side? 
And it's that, that really cool creativity, interesting, you know, human side, that frontier. What's what's over there? That curiosity. That's where Yeah, well, that's that's what that's the reason we have this machine. Somebody thought of this. I mean, I know. But, Isn't that cool? But it's also cool about the next thing that's gonna discover, and that'll be cool too. Right. You have to think like that's nice, but what about if we had a feeling that you were actually in the room? You know, someone's thinking this is sort of one dimensional. This is more yeah. like and it's going to feel like that. Or maybe one day I could just step into your place and step out or who knows? We don't know yeah. what it is from now. And uh, I think it'd be even more cool things coming up. Agreed. I, that's so exciting. It makes me very hopeful. And like, this is, everything is just the beginning. It all compiles. We're always in the beginning. Yeah. Everything's always at the beginning. I love it. So you loved, you loved musicals. You loved all those things. You're in New York. What made you want to go to L.A. then? Well, L.A. came because I did a movie called Avalon with Barry Levinson. It's another movie, I think, in 1960, uh, 1982 or something, 83. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then my wife said, listen, you always want to do movies and television, and movies and television are not in New York. And uh, it was time to decide. Or we had, our kids are very small. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to live, L.A. or New York? And I lived in New York for a very long time. I love New York. I'm a New Yorker. But L.A. is... Is where I want to be. And I came here and so I came to LA. We didn't know anybody. We didn't, we had one friend that we knew. I had no, I had no students. I had nothing. There was nothing happening for a couple of years. And sure. And then I got a chance and I got a break and, and, uh, and people gave me opportunities. I would mm -hmm. say that the Leonardo DiCaprio gave me a chance. He said, Hey, why don't you try this? I had people who supported me because they will give you one chance, but if you're sure. not good, that's it. And right. so I was very lucky that he, I had support from him and other people. Uh, and then everything slowly started to go. But I think the year 2000s, when everything picked up, I went to do a masterclass in Paris and it exploded because I teach not only how to be a, an actor, but I teach you how to become a star in your own life. Yeah. You can't be a star in your own life. If you bring that to your acting, it's your humanity that's more important than your training. That's right. Sure. And most people teach it differently, but that's just what I believe in, that it's your humanity is the problem. Because that's what I discovered was a problem for me, but it's also been a problem for the people who've been very successful. Once they found that, they become very successful around the world. That once they change their life, change themselves, it changed their career. I love that way of thinking. It's more like cultivating the artist as opposed to just the technical side of the art. You'll see that what I'm saying, whoever becomes an actor will always know that what I just said is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. It is your humanity. Yeah. Because you cannot give me what you do not have. If you're not a sensitive oh. person, you cannot be sensitive in your art because you everything sure. comes from you. You speak Russian? I do not. Right. So you can't give me what you don't have. I mean, let's say that's what you need. You have to learn it to be able to show it. In fact, that's what show business is, giving what's inside you. But if you don't know what you have, you don't know what to give. And so you're just kind of staring, uh, pretending to be someone else. It's not really that. Sure. Not, acting is really playing different parts of you. So you need to know yourself. You have to have a good life. You got to have, until you love the life you have, you can't have the life you want. It's really about creating, uh, changing your life and learning at the same time, these techniques that'll, that's been very successful for my, for my students. So when you said somebody asked you to coach first, that's how you got into teaching? Yeah, somebody, I didn't. Somebody said, hey, that's I cool. you coach. And that happens sometimes. There are, uh, it's pretty common in a way, uh, if you're working or you're a successful actor, another actor who's not working as much says, hey, can you help me with something? That's a normal thing to ask. And I thought, okay, I'll help someone. And then that person got a job and they brought me another student. So now I had two students. What must have so then I, I said, okay, then I started teaching a little bit, but I, I wasn't, then they, they kept bringing people. I didn't like advertise. <laughs> much. Sure. Hey, you got to come. No, I was thinking, I thought this was only going to be for like a year or two and that's it, but it just kept going. But then I decided to take acting into a wholly new way that wasn't being taught. I thought that you need to teach. I also think that no one's teaching uh, artists how to succeed in the business, how, sure. what, to, where to go. The, the business of show business also, because yeah. so you can have like, you know, you can have a greatest podcast, but if you can't get it out there, then nobody will ever know it. It's true. You know, so it's all about 
you know, you're getting out there and where to get out there and how to get out there. Because let's say you make great cookies, but you don't know where to connect it to the people. That's it's the connection that a lot yeah. of those people, very talented people, are wonderful waiters. And I'm right. thinking, wrong with that. Yeah, there's definitely wrong. And I feel that a lot of some schools don't teach at all enough of how to succeed. And so I started teaching about that, started teaching about you. And then I started teaching, I want you to become the actor of tomorrow, not the after the actor of yesterday. Yeah, that's one of my favorite adages you have is like, we have the actor of today. We need the yeah. actor of tomorrow because we've already right. got the today. And I was like, oh, right. that's because people want tomorrow. I'm looking at, I was looking at the Olympics and there's this 15 year old girl from Russia. And they say, we've never seen anything like this before. That's a lot coming from world champions. That means that this, she's a girl of tomorrow. She's like 15 and they're like going, what she's doing, I've never seen a person doing. She did something in the Olympics. She flipped around four times or something. And uh, they said, no one's ever done that. And so wow. that's, that's exciting. It's, you know, most people are of yesterday. Uh, and, and, and some of the schools are teaching things of yesterday. You have to make sure that they're teaching something new because acting changes. So people have to change. People's tastes change. What the sure. audience wants changes. But if you're teaching the same thing, if you got a nice typewriter store, it's you're going to go out of business. <laughs> yeah. Has it, how, how much has it changed just from like a technical side from you've been in the industry for a while now, like the way of acting back then to now? It's gone from acting which was pretending, that's mm -hmm. what acting was, pretending, right. uh, I'm pretending, I'm in love with you. Uh, that's, it's, you know, pretending is actually easy. Two, it's gone to being where I actually have to be in love with you for real, that myself, yeah. no one wants to see acting because acting is, is done in so poor fashion. That's how reality television came in because those right. people are, it's a, it's a direct result of acting not being pure enough because that person is crazy or this one is nuts or whatever. There mm -hmm. actually are, you know, like you're watching, um, not that I'm watching, but there's like The Bachelor or something where uh -huh. he's picking somebody, but understand the concept. He's picking someone and they're in the emotion and they think they're going to be in love. And it's a real, it's all real. I mean, oh, real, yeah, not fake. I mean, she's like crying. She thought she's going to get married or whatever. I don't know what, what somebody sure. But but you see, there is something reality and acting. The, the the truth is that people don't want to see you. If I'm looking at Brian, if you're playing a part, Brian has to disappear. I just want to see the character. Yeah. I don't want to see anything about you. And, and so acting has totally changed from the day of acting. And in fact, if you are talking to this beautiful girl and you're telling her she's gorgeous and you're beautiful and you're hot, and she says to you, hey, man, come on, Brian, you're acting. That's not a compliment. Right. That's not a compliment when they go, like, yes, I am. Because they realize you're just saying something that you don't really mean because there's something else you have in mind. And that's not acting anymore. It's the Al Pacinos and, and the uh, Dustin Hoffmans and all the great actors of even of today. There's no acting. If you're acting, if we see you acting, you're doing it wrong. Right. We can even tell you're acting, you're doing it wrong. Sure. <laughs> so obviously your teaching technique has to evolve with that. Like that's a lot of uh, time. It's constantly evolving, constantly changing. And if you want to know if you're in a good school, ask the teachers, are you changing your technique or are we still doing the same tick from 1962? Because what's happening is they go, we do this course and this course. They go, okay, but that's out. We're not using that. There are things that the wonderful, uh, Lee Strasberg, who's really a god yeah. in the teaching world, what he did, he was so great, but the things he did wouldn't work today. Mm -hmm. It worked at that time. Right. It was in that time, in that period, that style worked. Now it's more here. So I know how smart he would be, and he would have changed it to what works. Because, you know, things are not... The music of the 70s are not the music of today. And so if you keep just right. playing 70 music, you're going to be out of shape. And, and what is everybody looking for? Everybody in the music industry is looking for the next big thing, the next big thing, not the same old thing. Right. And so if you want, you want to make sure that you're with a teacher that says, of course, things are changing and therefore I have to change my technique, my approach, uh, exercises, how I look at acting and see what's, what's, you know, how can I become, how can I train these people to be the actors of the future? And uh, a lot of actors, a lot of great teachers actually come to LA 
to study mm -hmm. with some teachers to find out what's happening here because we're pushing the envelope here and then bring it back somewhere. Because if you're oh. somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you're not pushing it because you don't know what's what's out there. Right. Here, here's the best of the best. If you're going to be a teacher that people know, you're going to have to do something that, that is extraordinary because there's so many. I yeah. mean, it's like McDonald places. I mean, a hot dog, place, hamburger places. I mean, you got to be the greatest of the hot hamburger place that people want to go. It's not like we don't have choices here. Sure. <laughs> so they have like in and out is a famous one here in America, yeah. in LA. And yeah, well, of course, why is it and out better? Well, it's just nothing's frozen. It is good. I mean, when I used to eat meat, it was great. Sure. So, but, but I'm talking about the fact that you need to understand that the industry keeps changing and so must your training mm -hmm. and the way you think about it. Interesting. So like in the same way that different audiences are different, did you have to change your technique as far as different countries when you're teaching in other places? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, because every country has a different style. Right. So if you're all of a sudden in Germany, which is, you know, I know Germany well, but they're really big on the acting. I mean, they get, they're acting up a storm, you know? Sure. Different thing. The interesting thing for me is, is I have to teach them differently, but they really want to learn my technique. I wouldn't know how to teach them how to become successful German actors or Italian actors because I don't know that style. Sure. But what they want to do is they want to learn the, the Hollywood style because the true, the most truthful style. And there's a lot of people in L.A. also overacting, too. It's not like when sure. I'm talking about Meryl <laughs> Street and Robert De Niro, you got to make sure who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, oh, what about this guy? No, we're not. We're, there's pl plenty of people acting badly, but sure. If you want to learn like Meryl Streep and, and Al Pacino and the great, uh, um, all the wonderful actors that are, that are currently around, if you mm -hmm. want to learn their style, R Ryan Gosling, there's a lot of great actors. They have a certain style that people really, want to see they want to see those people yeah. they want to see those performances because their nuances they're different they don't play what's written they play what the writer didn't write they yeah else out but that they use their creativity i talk about that in my book as well yep is between the actor and the artist the actor will do exactly what's written and the artist will never do what's written, it will do yeah. what's written and that's huge so then what made you want to write a book then well, I, I started writing a book because so many people were wanting to hear more about my philosophy Smart. Uh, that I had no, I really, you know, I wanted to now that I did it. I mean, it's taken me like 20 months to write this book. Plus, yeah. I don't write it myself. I have a team of cool. three, other, three other people who are involved editing and writing. I mean, I really wanted to write the definitive book of how to become a successful artist. Mm -hmm um actor performer i also i also teach opera singers too yeah but also make you a successful human being because the first part you play is the part you play in life you're playing a part right now yeah and how well you play that part will determine your success because you're playing an interviewer but then you play a friend a boyfriend a girlfriend or a mm -hmm. lover and how well you play that will determine how successful you will be yeah. Those are all parts. There's a not like you're just like a father. I'm going to make you a father. There's a lot of bad fathers because they don't know how to play that role. That's that's the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, a little study. They go like, well, I'm a father, but they're not up for the role. Yeah. And uh, it's a, everything we're playing is parts. Right. Shakespeare had it right. Absolutely. All the world is a stage and we're all playing parts. But it's true because we do that automatically. Yeah. We're not playing, but I before I was like talking to my daughter, so I'm the father, then I'm the friend, then I'm a this, then I'm the boyfriend, you know, like then I'm the teacher. And, yeah. and not only that, but you expect me to play a certain part as well. Sure. You're expecting the waiter to bring you the food. I mean, you're like saying, aren't you going right. to play? Your and what about the cop? There's a problem in the corner. You want him to run and take care of the corner. You can't go like, hey, I'm having lunch right now. No, no, you want, you want him to play the policeman. This is your role. Yeah. It, Everybody, and even a president, you want them, the ones you like are the ones who are playing the part according to you. The ones you right. don't like are the ones who are saying this, you're, you're not playing it the way you should. I find that infinitely fascinating because it shows how many facets humanity has because who you are to every person in your life, it could be slightly different or completely different who you are That's to your kids versus your coworkers, you know? Well, yeah, you're talking a coworker. I'm the boss now. Sometimes I'm 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 the boss. Sometimes I'm working with someone. Yeah, working for me. It's all different roles. Yeah, I mean, just uh, 
there's no it's of course it's all different uh yeah. it, it could be nice it could be kind but you're different with your kid you're talking one way and if it's your girlfriend you're not saying you know honey no it's a different yeah. <laughs> it's automatically but how well you play those rods will determine mm. how long the relationship you have uh what to do a lot of people don't know how to play any kind of parts it's just a free-for-all sure and how to play a successful actor is when you know that you need to get training, you need to get out there, you need to work with people who push you, you need to do, you know, you need to find the joy in why you want to perform. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. And so not enough time to kind of go over everything. But, yeah. <laughs> Read but your book. <laughs> but yeah, I would get the audio book and wait for my other book to come out. But also, you know, there's lots of information online and you can mm -hmm. go to my website or you can go to somebody else's website. But yeah. get out there. Don't sit around. Don't wait. That's right. Nothing happens until something moves. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand, if you're not moving, it's because you don't understand that you're going to die soon. Right. You don't understand that concept. Yeah. You're, you're just like, because death is a lot more scary than not having done it. Yeah. I don't Agreed. know. I mean, how, you know, if you're going to go for it, go for it. I agree. Well, the good news is that I've never met an actor who is, I mean, real actors, you don't have to motivate them. You don't have to push them. Right. It's, if I have to motivate someone, if to push them somewhere, it's not for them. Right. Anyway, if you need to be pushed, it's not for yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. And I one of my one of my favorite parts of your book was uh with one of my favorite actors, Emilio Rivera. And I think that is the perfect uh, like encapsulation of like what you can do and what it means to like see someone and bring the best out of them and then to see success come from it. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing and he's incredible. And I, I love that you had that connection because I knew him as well and I've known his work. And then when I found you, I was like, oh, this is cool. I, I remember the first day I saw Amelia Rivera. That was, yeah, <laughs> that was intense. I met him, you know, and the story, if you people don't know, Emilio Rivera is now in several TV shows. What's the most famous one he's in? in uh, he was Alvarez and Mayans, and at, well, he was in Sons of Anarchy, then had his own spinoff with Mayans. He has a Mayans. All I mean, kinds of stuff. For a long time. Long, Everything. Long. But I, when I first met him, which was a very strange coincidence, uh, uh, I was speaking somewhere in some weird place, very weird, and I was just heading out the door because <laughs> I thought, I got to get out of here. And he sure. came up to me and he said, uh, would you teach me? And I, I said, I didn't even, I didn't know what to say because I wasn't really teaching privately at that time. And I said, no, I said, <laughs> I remember walking away. And then I thought, well, maybe I could help him. And I turned around and I helped him. And it was really shocking to him because we spent two hours, two years, really the two hours, two years, just getting him straight because he, he was a gang member. Yeah. And um, I mean, I didn't see any of that. I just thought he was a beautiful human being. Yeah. But uh, that really changed his life. And, and that makes me so happy. I mean, Emilio Rivera is just the nicest person. It just shows that if you find someone who can change your life, there are people you need to find a mentor because a mentor can take you to a place within yourself that you could never go by yourself. You can never become great. That's one of the things about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. All the great ones ask for help. Average people never do. Right. If you don't ask for help, you're just average because right. you, you tend to fail. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you didn't have teachers and ask them questions or, you know, if you didn't have teachers, would you have learned anything? You obviously ask for help. And we come out born asking for help. You cry. The babies yeah. are born asking for help. So you have to keep that going. Asking for help is a sign of strength. Asking for help keeps you strong, not weak. And it, that old adage, you know, it's like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Well, yeah, go with somebody great who's going the same direction. Yeah. No, you know, if you if you want to fail, here's what it is. If you want to fail, go alone. Yeah. <laughs> sure. The only thing you can do alone is to be sad and fail. There's yeah. no company has ever come like I've developed. No, there's nobody who, who's, there's no army of one who's ever won any war. Mm -hmm. There's no... Steve Jobs had a partner and they find other people right. He's not by himself in his, in his garage by himself, all by himself. Nothing would have happened. Mm -hmm. You need partners, but that's a sign of strength. And that's, I do that all day long, asking for help all the time.
and you offer it as well, which takes a special kind of person, I would say. Yeah, I, try to, uh, yeah, I offer help, my help if I feel like I can help them. I, I really don't work with everybody that I meet. I want to make sure that I can really do something for them. Otherwise, I want them to be with the right, right person. Which I think that I think that means a lot, though, because you're not just you know, you you care. That's what it shows. It's like, how can I help you elevate? But it's also like I don't. I think it's also my ego, which is why should I spend all this time if you're not going to take everything? Sure. <laughs> great, what am I teaching for? It's like I really love when I see success, but I need to see a successful person when I meet them, which is that right. I want to learn, I want to grow. You don't have to know anything, but you have that attitude. Like, tell me what. Maybe yeah. so the attitude I had, which is I just want to learn. Tell me what to do, good, bad, whatever. I don't care. And I was just hungry to learn. And I felt that if I knew what, I could do it. And that's what you need, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, sadly, there's so many people who don't have the right support system or have been told that they're terrible. Mm -hmm. And the thing about you is the thing you hate most about you is usually your gifts that turn out to be the best part uh -huh. of you. Oh, okay. That's the thing. Like you have a funny nose. Yeah, that's why you made it because of your nose. Right. Uh, because, I mean, what is what do I tell Danny DeVito? You know, he was too short. You didn't think he knew that, but right. his height actually helped him. In other words, it, it went from a negative to a positive because all your negative things are actually very positive. Sure. Where you get something negative, it's actually your gifts. It's actually what makes you great. I love the way that. You look, this, that, the way you speak. All that, when you take it and make it to something positive. It sets you apart. Well, I remember speaking to Lady Gaga. I was very fortunate to go to a premiere of Stars Born. Cool. And she told me that, you know, people thought she was crazy and nobody wanted to deal with her. Well, yeah, that was crazy. But now crazy's in. Now, now she's not sure. crazy. <laughs> like, and she's not, she didn't change. It's just that great artists make the world change. Yeah. The world needs to change. You don't change. You have to change the world. The way it works, you change them towards you. Sure. So people still thought she was crazy, but now no one does. Right. I remember, yeah. No, but that's what happens. First, they think you're crazy, and then they go like, wow, you're so great. Yeah. But that's the problem. <laughs> the problem. They'll, they'll get it eventually. Time will tell. Well, it's sort of like not comparing it, but it's like, a, you know, it has a, it's like any anybody... Anybody who is uh, loved now was thought of horrible before or like terrible sure. in, from artists to religious figures. I don't know, Jesus, anybody. They thought sure. they didn't like them. And now everything's great. You know, it's like, <laughs> like they look at it in a different way. And it's a way that when somebody's different, everything seems odd. And then it becomes a norm. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we should be nice. We should be kind. We, it's like, what is this? You know, it's always new mm -hmm. until it's like, that's it. Right. And that's what it is. So I want everybody to know out there, whatever you think you feel that is weird about you when people make fun of you, that's your money. I bet on it that that's the way you make it. What made you want to write a second book? Well, I have so many more things. <laughs> I, I think this book sort of is like a quarter of what I know. And now I've added three quarters of new information because I constantly read and learn. I'm always working and learning and stuff and coming up with new ideas. And, and so it was, I was very fortunate to have a wonderful publisher, Penguin Random House, mm -hmm. and said, uh, we want to do a book with you. And then we have other countries. It's going to come out in Russia. It's going to come out in different places. Great. Translation. Um, and I had new ideas. And, and you know what? it's not it's dated it's like hmm, that's dated i hear sure. <laughs> update that you have to update that idea you know sure. that's good but now you should you can try this or push this more um there's so many i mean you have to just look around and say what is the audience interested in and you have to be good enough for that and like you said it, techniques evolve ideally everything evolves everything that thought people thought was crazy has become normal yeah no people about something even the telephone, telephone, how would that one now? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't have a telephone. Was the process different writing your first book to your second? Yes. Second one was much easier. The first one was like so difficult for me because I had never written anything before. And sure. I didn't really understand it. The second one, of course, the second one is taking me like more than almost two years to write every chapter, every words. We've gone over it so many times. It's, it took a long, long process, but now I think it's a very, very good. And I think that anyone who, who's used their creativity would, be, would like this book. This is not just for actors. 
this is for anybody who's human, I think, and who realize about life and understanding it in a deeper way and that we're all playing parts. And if you're an actor, of course, you'll get some great insights, but there's lots of chapters in there. I have a chapter called Hide and Seek. It's the last thing I tell you. Ooh. Chapter called Hide and Seek. How does Hide and Seek go? How, how does that go? How does that, how does that work? One person hides. One person hides. And? Waits. Waits. And then the other person starts looking for him, right? Correct. Right. What I discover is that if that's a great game for kids. Right. They hide under the bed, on the closet, you know, whatever, they're hiding. Right. What I've discovered now is that adults are doing it. Oh. They're hiding, except no one's looking for you. They're just hiding. Ooh. They're playing hide and seek, but yeah. there's no one looking for you. And they will never find you because you're under that couch hiding. And it's fun if they find you. If you're not found, which I've been, you know, sometimes they go, okay, I can't find you. You come out of the door or whatever. But if no one's looking for you, but I discovered that people are now doing hide and seek, except no one's seeking you. So if you put yourself in the middle to be seen, you will never be found. Do you find, having done this for so long, is there like a most common pitfall that a lot of people seem to fall into? Well, everybody thinks they're not good enough. That's how I thought so too. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's just but normal. Uh, yeah, I think that's that starts from there. Yeah. The biggest pitfall is not asking for help. That's the biggest right. pitfall. It's over. And then it's really finished for you because if you didn't ask for help, your car wouldn't work. That was how to, you know, your engine's not working. What are you going to, you're going to fix it? No. If you had something wrong with your heart, you, what, you're going to fix it yourself? You don't go to the doctor? You know, asking for help is a very important thing and helping yourself. And now there's so much information uh, online. Sometimes I get uh, emails, we get studio gets emails like, I don't know how to start. Can you tell me? And I'm thinking, you don't know how to start. Just put it in the internet. How do you start? And yeah. nine <laughs> websites will come up. But that means that you haven't even looked. Right. Even looked. And no, you know, it makes no sense. Right. I would say the common problem is you don't think you're good enough. And everybody thinks that way. But it doesn't matter. You go anyway. Because yeah. you are. If you have the dream, the dream wants you. You have the passion. You have the talents. The talent's not the lack of problem. It's thinking. It's the thoughts. Uh, and it's uh, really Stella Adler said the most important thing is not working on just on your uh talent but working on yourself do you have a piece of advice for new actors that you that isn't being given out as much as you think it should be well i think for new actors first of all you have to become authentic i think the authenticity you need to become authentic and you'll know when you're authentic when you're four things if you have these four things you are authentic mm -hmm. happy you feel powerful you're connected to your gifts and you're open. So if you don't feel those things, if you're not happy, powerful, connected to your gifts and open, you're not authentic. Whatever it is, you're not authentic. And there's a lot of people, if you're coming into show business, you're not authentic, then you're acting on top of acting, on top of right. acting. And so therefore we don't have you. So the first thing everybody needs to do, including myself, was to find your authenticity. And the reason they don't want to find the authenticity is because when they were authentic, they got such negative feedback. They ah. started being different. Sure. And so people think, how should I act? How should I behave to have that boyfriend, have that girlfriend, have my parents like me, have the school like me? So you're acting all the time. And the day you stop acting is the day you start living. That's why I called it that way. Ah, I love it. Look at that perfect little button. And what's your next book called? The next book called The Revolutionary Guide to Acting. Ooh, it's a good one. It's a good one. You got to have Thank the sequel. So much. Appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. it so much. Where can people find you online? Where can they find your book? They can, well, my, my new book, my, well, Stop Acting, Start Living is, they can get it on the audio version. It's really very good right now. Mm -hmm. It's harder to find the uh, copy because I think it, it was like, they sold it out. And so, um, and if they want to go online, go to bernardhiller.com. Beautiful. I'm easy to find and, and uh, look at the videos and if that hits you the right way, then contact our, our school. But if it doesn't, find some place that does. Yeah. There are places out there. Don't just think of one place. 
but think of everything around the world and wherever you find the best teacher, go there. I love it. Solid, solid. Bernard, thank you so much. It was great meeting you. My nice. best everything. Thank you so much. All the very best. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the shows, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, Victor, Jim, and Chris. Your support means so, so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.